Look for him. He's high flying, can run the floor, and I've said it once, I'll say it again, Lowe. He plays without the ball. Well, I'm sure the student section, the corral, had some beverages. They're ready to get loud. And here we go. It is basketball time inside Moody. Calvin Solomon wins the tip for this new look UTEP team. Second season under Joe Golding. A lot of new faces. And an early turnover. And that one thrown away by Solomon. Yeah, Solomon's from Stephen F. Austin. Very confident player. Coach asked him if he's going to show up today. He said, bring your popcorn. Paul almost had a popcorn moment as Hunter was looking for Mitchell. Now here comes Solomon pushing it the other way for the Miners. Hunter predetermined he was going to make that play. Should have laid off that pass, especially with Solomon there. And a three-point attempt by Otis Frazier. Off the mark. And it is Tyrese Hunter fighting for the rebound and drawing the foul. So the starting five for the Longhorns, Timmy Allen, Dylan Pasu, Tyree Sutter, Marcus Carr, and Dylan Mitchell, Tay Hardy, Shamar Gibbons, Calvin Solomon, Otis Frazier, and Kevin Kalu for the UTEP Miners, a team that lost five of their leading scores from last season. So a lot of new, the guys in Navy. Marcus Carr, a drive, a little floater, Mitchell tried to follow, could not get it to go. Defense still will be the DNA, the calling card of this Texas team, the freshman brought in, words of Chris Beard, they've played defense since high school, as their program's Made that a priority. You know to get on the court with Beard, that's what you gotta do. Yeah, you gotta do defense there. And then talking to Coach Golding, because typically his teams play a little bit fast. Talk to him today, and he said, not tonight on the offensive end. He said, we're gonna try to control the pace offensively, get good shots. He is keenly aware of the number of people in the building. In fact, he told his team about it at the shoot around. He does not want the ball just thrown up. He wants good quality shots every time down the floor on this end. Like that face looks familiar because Colby was a head coach at Abilene Christian when they shot Texas in the tournament two years ago. And right before the buzzer, it is UTEP with the first bucket here inside Moody. That shot there, the putback, is emblematic of how they're playing early. They're just taking it right to Texas. Not but for everything going on on the court, it's what surrounds this court, which is truly the story today. The opening of this $375 million arena. 1,200 students, they call the corral, here feeling the emotions the season opener in a new building. Marcus Carr, no good. But Timmy Allen with the rebound. Hunter behind Mitchell, and that's a turnover. Here comes the Miners. Good hands by Hunter. One of the best in the Big 12 at that. Pickpocket. Allen weaving through traffic. And one. Timmy Allen salutes the Texas students who arrived early and are now getting loud. Well, it breaks the ice for Texas, but it is the antithesis of what, what Coach Golding wanted. This is coming off of that turnover, and then Timmy Allen, as good as anyone, moving on the floor without the ball. Timmy just does such a good job taking the hit, and he's even, I think he's a little stronger looking. And he was last year, as in Allen, so he's a guy you want to keep your body between he and the basket because of that strength. And again, in a different way than Mitchell, he plays extremely well without the ball. Allen, the three-point play, the first bucket for a Longhorn inside this brand-new arena. Texas students arriving around 6.30 this evening. And 1,200 seats to take up about 75% of the lower bowl. And the overflow as Mitchell pulls down the rebound up above us to the upper deck. And they're filling that up as well. More miscommunication. The 
came. So what happens when Tyrese goes to the bench? Carr can't be turning the ball over, particularly at his size. These aren't big guards, Lowell. So you have to take care of the ball, value it, and get good shots. Again, especially when you move from the two to the one position. It's so hard. Joe Golden team does. They turn you over. Already a couple early for the Longhorns. That is Sir Jabari Rice, number 10 in white. Hardy passing up a three, working on Mitchell. One on the shot clock. Shot clock violation. Credit to defense. UTEP just got caught up in running their stuff, if you will, and forgot that you have to score. They play, as in UTEP, a little more of a traditional style, as we've seen here early. They like to throw the ball in. It won't be easy because they aren't a particularly big team, and Texas will be able to match them around the basket. The return over is from both clubs. Here are the early moments. Carr for three. Carr leaves it short off Christian Bishop. And a quick, empty possession for the Longhorns. A lot of weave action early, getting the defense moving. Texas switching. Nice look inside by Gibbons, but Texas was all over that. And out on the Longhorns, so Utah will keep possession here. How tough is it if you're Chris Beard to scout a team like UTEP considering they just signed 10 scholarship players in the offseason? Everybody's new. Well, you can know guys because you've seen them on the road and you get reports on what guys do, but you just don't know them together. And your players don't know them, so it's difficult in the first game. Calvin Solomon blocked by Bishop. Rice with the rebound. Rice for three, passed it up. He goes down, and that's going to be a foul on Utah. Going against Zarek Onyema. Look at the block here. Well, that's just great help coming over. That's a double block, actually. But you mentioned the difficulty of not seeing someone and then having to play them low. That's why, and Coach Beard mentioned it yesterday, you'll see two or three of these upset big-time programs yeah. on an opening night or early in the season simply because you just don't know the personnel. And that reaction is for Brock Cunningham checking in the game with Mitchell going to the bench. A lot of factors here, a lot of newness for UTEP. In some ways, opening up a new building, a lot of noise, a lot of distractions for Texas. The message from Beard cannot get caught up in that. Focus has to be on UTEP. Rice trying to get a screen from Bishop. Pulls up three. Wide right. And the rebound by Kevin Kalou. Yeah, a little bit surprised early. Texas didn't get a lot of clean or easy looks, especially considering they want to play the numbers game with pace. I'm going to nod to UTEP early. Just being down one this far into the game, Lowell. Malik Zachary, Juco transfer, the backup point guard, guarded by Hunter. No good. Allen's got a rebound. Eyes up, looking to run. Allen pitch to Hunter for three. Missed everything. And rebound, Frazier. What's happening with the Texas offense right now? There's a run out to Hunter, one on one. Jump stop. Nothing. So a slow start here for both Texas and Utah. Miners knew they would struggle with offense. Texas wanted to crank it up, was the big hit in the offseason. I would say very unexpected as well after the work he did at Iowa State. Setting Iowa State freshman records. 35 starts, 172 assists, 71 steals. I, I agree with that. I, starting point guard as a freshman, one of the best, if you could have argued, he's the best point guard last year, in, in conference-wise, especially as the season wore on. But 
Isaiah Brockington, his teammate, I know they were very close. And he moved on to the professional ranks, and that might have had some impact along with the great recruiting of Rodney Terry yeah. to get Hunter here. Well, Rodney Terry, former head coach at Utah, Joe Golden followed him. As Golden led the Miners to 20 wins in his first season. Most wins for the program since 2014-15. Brock Cunningham trying to get it away from Tay Hardy. The dump down, and that's going to be a foul on Bishop. That is an unnecessary foul. He really couldn't get that. But it also speaks to the point I was trying to make a moment ago, Low. As you saw, they want to get that ball inside. Kevin. Kalu, you saw him posting up there. They like him. He's fairly bouncy and has good size. Again, UTEP plays a traditional style as they ISO here at the elbow. Solomon gets into the paint. Tough finish. UTEP with two more. Rice quick the other way. Rush shot. Fighting to get it back. We got a held ball. Jump ball. Texas ball. And so Texas will keep possession. Yeah, and low. There are two levels to running. The, the first one is you have to run and get the ball up the floor quickly and be comfortable with that. The second level is executing with opportunities like those. And Texas is still figuring that out, Lowell. You have one performance here under their belt. That was nearly thrown away. The suit got there but was called for a travel. It was an exhibition game against Arkansas, but they won that thing 90 to 60. How much of that translates to doing it for real? Well, a lot. I mean, one, they also were playing against little boys or young guys. I shouldn't say little boys. I don't, I don't want to disrespect them. You got a younger team in Arkansas. These guys are more mature here at UTEP. They've been to other programs. And they're going to come in here and compete. Coach Golding has a history of having success, as you pointed out, especially against the big dogs. That's why he's here at Utah. This is Jamari Sibley. He's the leading returning scorer as he lifts up this three at only 5.3 points per game. So that goes into the roster overhaul that Golding had to make in season number two. Texas, meanwhile, one for seven from the field with four turnovers after that to soon travel. And the only player, in fact, he was there, D Derek Onyema, when Coach Terry was there. That's the only player left from when Coach Rodney Terry was there. We talked to him for the game, comparing him to a poor man, David Robinson. Arterio Morris trying to go glass, does not work. Morris was the leading scorer in that exhibition win. Put down 19 points against Arkansas. One of two freshmen along with Dylan Mitchell, the top 17 of the ESPN recruiting rankings, and that's going to be a charge. And of course, it's Brock Cunningham drawing it off the shoulder of Calvin Solomon, Solomon's second. Well, they call Solomon their alpha dog. Great positioning by Brock. Look at him move the feet, but watch the shoulder right into the chest. And he's their guy who wants to score. Anytime you see Solomon get that ball around the free throw line low, he's going to put blinders on like he's in the Kentucky Derby running and go to the basket. And that proved to be excellent defense by Cunningham as he took the charge and also as he took a seat on the bench. Dr. Golding about that upset against Texas in the tournament. And he was hoping that Brock Cunningham did not play major minutes in that game. From the scout, they were concerned about Cunningham. In fact, he did not play major minutes in Golding, but thought that was an edge for ACU in that upset. Play the shot clock, two for Hunter. Some patience, Tyrese and Johnson. And Tyrese Hunter with the bucket. His first is a long one. And that's where he's good. I know analytics has pushed a lot of the threes, but that area of the court, that mid-range, is very critical even to open the floor up at times. That's an excellent shot by Hunter. He's just got to grow in the three-point area. That's where he struggles. But that's what I see when I look at Texas. Uh, it's out of town of bounds. Off the hands of Shamar Gibbons. You got some guys that can be a threat inside. Like a Dylan Mitchell. A Dylan DeSue if he's healthy. You've got a lot of good mid-range guys. 
specifically Timmy Allen, that's as good as it gets. But where's your outside shooting? Where's that dead eye three point shooting? I'm not sure I see it. Well, it's got to come from Carr. He's got to be your guy. Obviously, Morris, this is new to him coming out of high school, but Carr was up around 40% last season. I don't know. Mitchell was going to keep the cut going there. Throws it away. Turnover number five. Yeah, he was up around 40% from the floor and 34. Really different to actually be a home court advantage. I'm not sure the Texas students now know what to do. They're here, but start yelling. Just scream something. Do what you can to try to help the cause of your team. Well, I'm a representative student here, and there's no MOC in the house. And team is two for nine from the floor, Lowell. Come on, guys. you got to hoop a little bit if we're going to show up. Oh, Mark is caught. Stops it. Pop. That will get him going. So it's what have you done for me lately. That's what you're saying. There you go. He had him on skates. And that's the Marcus, the Minnesota Marcus Carr showed up on that possession. Great off the bounce. Average 19 points per game in two tournament games for the Longhorns. A win against Fontaine. And a loss against Purdue. Need more of that. Look that nickname, Minnesota Marcus <laughs> We made it up for the shot clock. Oh, a late whistle as Onyema is trying to beat the shot clock. Here's the bucket, though. Oh, man. That was sweet. You saw the little Tim Hardaway crossover. Speaking of Tim, if you're watching, man, your alma mater. You kept doing a heck of a job. Yeah. Killer crossover. This is Zaricone Yema at the line, one of El Paso's own, went to elementary middle school in El Paso. Parents were in the military, dad was transferred to San Antonio, went to John Jay High School there, and now is back in what he considers to be his hometown of El Paso, a wonderful city by the way. He's freakishly athletic and he's a lefty. His athleticism, he can match Texas with his strength and athleticism. There's Timmy. So smooth, so consistent. And the first bucket for the Longhorns. Car working, a lot of dribbling here. Allen, that's usually where he is at his best and does his most work. Frazier playing with two fouls. It's 23 in the Navy. This is Gibbons. Baseline cut to good feed. And the finish is there by Frazier. What a great pass. And that was created by the hard drive. Ache. Great backdoor pocket pass for the finish. Isolation action. Allen's draw contact as well. Allen set all of that up. He did. He was ISO. The action that they had but there, but Hardy here is going to drive hard right to the baseline, forces the defense to react. Carr there. Great pass. Frazier able to finish. I'll tell you what, Utah is a little more athletic, I think, than Texas expected. That was foul number three on the other end by Frazier. <laughs> Frazier now certainly going to the bench. <laughs> Bishop enters the game. Desu going to the bench. Well, talking with Golding, thought the question mark was offensively. Wasn't sure how good they would be, especially early on. Knew that they would play defense and said, even at this point, before the season has even started, felt like his team was farther along with their defense than at any point last season. You don't, you know, they have the scrimmages, but you don't have a lot to measure that by other than what happens tonight. Give us pressure. Getting into the front court. Your sibling. 
back to Gibbons. Transfer from Evansville. Missed it all. And we've got a whistle, a flop warning. And Hawaiian shirt guy in the background does not agree with that. Actually, he does like it because it's against Shamar Gibbons. It's one of the original characters of this Texas student section. As Tyrese Hunter goes to the line. Hunter two for two from the stripe so far. Talk about the impact one player can make though. This was an Iowa State team that was two and twenty before he came to, on board. Ends up bringing him to the Sweet 16 in his first season. And then transfers to Texas. That's going to be a interesting return to Ames for him. Much like the return of Chris Beard going to Lubbock a season ago. Probably not that much venom to find people in Ames. Well, anytime you go back to a place where a lot of that in college basketball because of the portal system. More and more. Yeah, especially with guys transferring. Nice speed to Timmy Allen. Mitchell with the follow. Dylan Mitchell, the freshman from Tampa with his first bucket for the long haul. Well, that's a little bit of a busted play. Texas getting a little separation here. UTEP has got to be careful, but good job not getting in a rush in spite of the great finish there by Mitchell and getting the crowd in this game. Hardy for three. Hardy back iron. The rebound there by Lemus. Hardy thinking about it again. Kick out to Lemus. Gets past Carr. Leaves it short. And that's some elevation on that rebound by Tyrese Hunter. That's fine to Mitchell inside. Switch his hands. Mitchell. The benefit of this really started on the defensive end. This is the end of the work that was done, Lowell. It's the beginning of the work. You called it. The great rebound by the point guard to start the break. And that is a huge luxury I'm seeing for him here early, Lowell, for this Texas team. That being Hunter can go up with the trees and rebound the basketball. And he does have the freedom to go ahead and start the break. That will loom large for Texas trying to run the ball, if you will, this season. Mitchell cannot convert the three-point play. Hunter with a 43-inch vertical. Not a huge dude either. But bouncy. No, and fearless. I mean, not everybody wants to go in there with the trees. And that's off Kevin Kalu. Carr. Oh, nice move against Lemus in, draws the contact with the whistle. Looks like that's going to be on Calvin Solomon, which would be number three for him. And if we see that again, you'll see the crossover, which is what creates the separation so he can get the driving lane. What's the crossover that hard from left to right? You saw the defense. He did push off a little bit, but I thought he was so violent in the way that he drove to the basket law. That that's what created the opportunity, and all you got to do in that situation is just make sure you hit a body and get the ball up on the glass. So uh, a couple of times we've seen that crossover from Carr. Is that something potentially refined during the offseason? Well, I think it's a, really the position. I think this is something that he could have done a lot of last year. He, he sometimes skews the phraseology a little bit of a model. He, he thinks like linear, like, hey, yeah, I, I need to score. That's what, And not flow. so much like a point guard, if you will. So now he's freed up. When he catches the ball, just score the ball. He doesn't have to do as many things like you do behind the mic with me on your wing. You always make me feel so good. Man. Yeah, because you are good. Yeah, it makes you feel good when you got a good teammate. Might as well say it. I got caught with the hand in a cookie jar. That is classic not being patient. So you really didn't have any kind of advantage there to gain. And you do it on the backs so of all of this experience. Yeah. We've got <laughs> wow. five players on this team that are in their at least fifth year. And then you have 
a senior, like an old school senior, fourth year guy like Dylan DeSue. What does that mean for Texas? As that is a turnover. Simply crossed the line. What does that mean ultimately for the Longhorns, given that there is a lot of experience all across college basketball now? Well, we saw a little bit of what it means against Arkansas because of all of the experience in terms of size and strength. Rice and three. The New Mexico State transfer is pure with that outside stroke. It's 28 Longhorn. Three-time all-wax selection. Sir Jabari Rice, two years ago, he was the preseason WAC player of the year. Teamed up with Timmy Allen's brother, Teddy Buckets. That's right, Teddy Allen. New Mexico State went 27 and 7, reaching the second round of the NCAA tournament. It's a guy that has won a lot, a native Texan as well. Yep. He's coming back to finish at home. Kevin's no, the cleanup is there and home by Kevin Kalu. And that's what they like about Kalu. There you see, went up and got the rebound. He can get a lot done around the basket, even against his Texas team. Morris for three. Arterio Morris, the freshman with his first bucket. Another top 20 prospect. A Chris Beard in this Texas team. Well, you know what you gotta like about this if you're Texas is Rice and Morris is showing a bench. That can score the ball for Texas. It's all back to back threes after being 0 and 5 for a while. Foul number two there on Kevin Kalu. Texas back on Thursday against the program formerly known as Houston Baptist. Now Houston Christian will have that matchup coming up Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Time. Now I've been told, to talk about more great reporting here, that the theme for the student section will be jorts to pay homage to Brock Cunningham, who's known to wear the jean shorts. Now that's some of the organization that we were talking about, getting into. Yeah, exactly, but you can't just show up with your shorts. You gotta be you gotta loud with shorts. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you gotta have a plan, you gotta be organized. Kind of like Coach Beard is with the system this year. You're gonna run, you're gonna move the ball. What are you gonna do when you show up with your shorts? <laughs> Out of bounds on Sibley. So turnover number nine for the UTEP Miners. Texas starting to get out of it defensively. Now, Chris Beard did talk about wanting to open up the offense a little bit more, wanted to increase the pace of play. We know defense is the DNA. So how different does it actually look offensively? Well, so far, I don't see a ton, especially on a possession like this one. Where you set up to try to get it into the zoo. They wanted to get the ball inside to the big. But what I'm seeing here early long is a lot of balls being shot in the under 15, with 15 seconds or less to go in the shot clock. And so if you're going to run, you've also got to have the freedom potentially to take some bad shots early in the shot clock because ultimately you're playing the volume game or the numbers game in terms of getting the ball up at the rim. Only 22 programs played at a slower pace than Texas last season as Onyema drops out one. And that's an example. That's great. That, there you go. You see, he's just thinking score. That reminds me of a guy who played for Portland named Terry Porter. Carr with the big three, and Morris started that with their big threes. They had back-to-back -back threes, and then I think that kind of opened things up and allowed a guy like Carr to feel way more comfortable in getting in the act, if you will. It's a 17-4 run by the Longhorns. They started one of eight from the field. They're seven of nine since then. With the lead, at some point, UTEP's going to have to pick up their pace. Otherwise, this could turn into a big collision there, an offensive foul. Arkansas tight run. That is against Malik Zachary. Carr took the brunt of that. 
But gets the win because this guy's got the ball now. See it. Well, you see right there where he slides right into the car. Car sells it. And he stopped and just handoff. Zachary, that is. That call would not have been made. So for UTEP, Solomon three fouls, Frazier three fouls. We saw John Dos Anjos go to the early, limping. So they are having to go through a lot of these new bodies here in the first half. Five minutes to play before the break. Texas up 25 to 12. Here's Rice all the way. Too easy there for Jabari Rice. I really like Rice. Did a great job. Very efficient. Moving without the ball. Used the left hand to get to the rim. Really good player. Playing both ends of the floor. Classic two-way player. Nice pull up. Malik Zachary. In a flop warning as well. Well, it's a point of emphasis for the referee. Joe Golden trying to get him. Either settle down, get the composure back. What do you think about that? Well, that I mean, by the book, sure, but no harm, no foul. Because typically just for rhythm and otherwise, a guy will take that shot. It's kind of fall back. Like to no, be a flop, the it's, arms are going. Like he's kicking the legs. Well, and it's a sell to get a, to get a foul. And it didn't look to me. You know, and who am I to say? I'm over here on the sideline with my pal, but it didn't look to me like he was try trying to sell that he no. was fouled. Nonetheless, once again, point of emphasis as it was a season to go. Hunter to Morris. Morris has the lane. Nice kick out back to Hunter. Good play. Tyrese Hunter, he's quickly endearing himself to these Texas fans. Yeah, he is. And only 27% from beyond the arc, but I like how he didn't hesitate. I more so like Morris and how he went north and south. To me, with Rice and Morris in the game, offensively, particularly in the half court, Texas is a lot more aggressive. They're going north and south, center, east and west. Speaking of that, we're going to take them. Also, going back to that Arkansas game, whoa, Texas, they were only up by 10 in the first half. And they had like 40 points and they got to 90. So we're starting to see a pattern of slow starts yeah. with a slow rise of the pace and ability to execute. Friends, it was a 7-4 game eight minutes into this contest. It has picked up significantly. The outside shot is falling as Texas has made three straight. Now three out of four. Good hustle there by Morris trying to get the rebound, but it's off him and UTEP basketball. Meanwhile, for the Miners, what do they need to do to get this thing turned around? I mean, I guess it would start with not turning it over. Well, I would stay with the plan, which is to move the ball and try to get good shots. They've been doing a good job of being patient. And that's an example of moving the ball and getting a good shot. Nice move by the man that had the first bucket here, Tay Hardy. No. A foul. It looked like he oh, called no. a basket Goal interference. Yep. Yep. It was a basket interference. So count that bucket. Let's check this one out. Well, that's a move the ball. We didn't see it there, but it was a skip pass thrown from over the top. And then Dessou hit that as it was being tipped back into the basket. But they can chip away. UTEP can. Here, with only a little over three minutes to go here in this first half. Contrarily, Texas needs to keep their foot on the gas and not get into too much of the deliberate stuff of trying to score. Desu, tough shot there for Dylan Desu. Spent some time in the offseason with Mike Miller in Memphis, training with him, former NBA star. Went through the pre-draft process just to, to get a taste of, of what it's like so he had a better idea of what he needs to do as Parker nearly comes up with a steal. So he is ready for what is next. Desu with the block. Oh! He got a foul call? No, he got another goaltender. That oh. was a phenomenal rundown block. I'm not 
so sure. Yeah, let's see this. I'm not so sure that wasn't a good block. Did this hit the glass before he came and blocked it? We'll see here. Oh, oh that was a good block oh. from that angle. Tough call to make, but also a good block. And that's the one thing referees sometimes have to do. You've got to your whistle and let the athleticism do what it does. You asked me a moment ago, how do you get back in this game? But now all of a sudden, UTEP has scored two baskets in a row, Lowell. Off to Sue, goaltending calls. Being aggressive, trying to alter shots as Allen now throws this one away. So 2-10 left, an opportunity for UTEP to close the gap going into the break. And, and if you juxtapose this group against the last group with Rice and Morse, this one's like the big brother. They're careful. They want to do what the parent says. The other one just hoops and takes what's there for you. And that's what I see in terms of the pace with these starters. Right in the hands of Dylan Mitchell. Here comes Hunter. Hunter almost traveled, logs it up. That's going to be a charge. A little out of control. That's an area where Hunter has to be very efficient and good this year. And it's because of the size. We're not talking about a, a big guard. You want him to be able to take care of the ball, especially in a situation like that where you got a fast break, you have numbers. And also, I talked about the reason you run is the score. It's okay to pull that out and get a better shot. Yeah. Just because you're going 100 miles an hour doesn't mean you have to take that shot. Muscling inside his own Yemo. And timeout by Chris Beard cannot be happy with this. And look at Joe Goldie. This dude is fired up. He saw that his team was losing. So 138 left. Chris Beard called the timeout. Trying to finish strong here in the final 90 seconds and change. And we see this so many years past, right? Texas trying to find the ability to just run away from teams. As Hunter was trying to call the timeout, but stepped out of bounds. And it's the second time we've seen a long timeout where you have time to talk to your team, design plays, and you come out and you don't execute and end up with a turnover. Again, to me, Lowell, this group plays a little careful. They play as freed up as you would think, considering that they're trying to run and have to play with a lot, little more pace this season. Now, is that because it's a season opener? Will this develop in time as Onyema is called for the foul? Well, I think the collection of guys, it's a new group. And I think collectively, if they're going to run, and I'm not suggesting that you have to run every single time, but it just means you're going to play with a little more speed and pace, and they seem to get a little deliberate to me is why. You see it here. Stoppage of play, that means you're going to call a play. Do you run the play? Absolutely, you run the play. But do you take opportunities if you see them before the play develops? Absolutely. The second group is doing that. The first group, to me, is not. And i got to believe, over time, if you show the inability to open it up and play faster, that's when Beard does slow it down and says, this is how we have to play to be successful. Here's Hunter working in some traffic. Bishop lost it, got it back. And it's going to stay with the Longhorn. Yeah, that's careless. That, I'm putting that on Hunter. Particularly, you got a big and you're throwing it down by his ankles. What in the greatest pass? He's got to be a lot more careful with that basketball in a situation. You have the defense pressure and you got the big there. So sloppy start. Texas got it together. Now sloppy going into the break. Nine on the shot clock. Bishop, quick shot. Oh, the floater and the foul for Christian Bishop back for his second season here on the 48. That was created by the cut with Allen. You'll see Allen cut along the baseline. Forces the defense to move. Watch this cut. You see that cut right there? Then he spins right into the lane. That ball was blocked into the basketball basket. Literally low. And potentially that's a momentum changer. Sometimes when you do things aggressively, positive things happen. And that was an example there. Again, one, because of the cut by Allen, forced the defense to shift. And two, the way that 
Bishop got in a spin cycle and went hard to the front of the rim. So Kalu, Frazier, Solomon all now with three fouls. Texas again unable to convert the three-point play. Bishop is a guy though that increased his production when Trey Mitchell part of the program is now at West Virginia. That was an opportunity for Bishop and he played better when he had an opportunity to play more. Jump that pass there, but it will stay with Utah. Yeah, and those guys, Bishop, the Sioux, Allen, the guys, you know, playing three, four, and five for Texas, they've got to be solid and sound on paper. They could be considered your Achilles heel, and I don't think it has to be that way because of their experience and just playing smart like that last possession on offense. Gibbons lost it. Shot clock winding down, and this is going to be a shot clock violation. So a good effort by Derek Hamilton to get down there, scramble for the loose ball, but just could not get it in time. And I talked about Achilles Hill, and Bishop makes the play there. Got his hand on that ball and busted up the action there. Right above the top of the key. 14 turnovers in the first half by Utah. When Texas here clearly will go for the last shot. Who's your guy here? Well, I think one of the three-point shooters will end up with this, either Rice or Carr, for a long look from the basket. Carr, step back. The follow by Mitchell. Two seconds on the clock, and it's going to be UTEP ball with 1.1 before the half. Just don't want a foul here. Zachary, the heave, too long to the first half, Texas men's basketball inside Moody Center, it's in the books, much better after that one of eight start from, well, one of the keys, to why this team was able to extend the lead they have going into, had going into the half long, Longhorn shot to the 15th from the field going into the break, so many mistakes by UTEP. An entirely new starting five. Ten new scholarship players. Fourteen turnovers. Ten fouls for them. Three players with three fouls. And John Dos Anjos went to the UTEP locker room early in the first half as well with an apparent injury. So running out of bodies quickly. For Joe Golden. So Mitchell picks up the foul, his first. So Golden goes right back to where he wanted to go early, which was to his big. He goes to Solomon, to Stephen F. Austin transfer. He's probably, particularly in their front line, their most aggressive player low. It's also a way for them to control tempo. Solomon averaged 3 points per game a season ago. Stephen at Boston will get the second of the two free throws. Had some experience against Goldie in that conference. Goldie, our head coach at Abilene Christian. Best friends with Chris Beard. When Beard got the job at P3 McMurray, both Beard and his buddy Golding were coaching in Abilene at the same time. There were as many cold ones shared. <laughs> we talk about awesome guys to be around. Joe Golding showed up last night for the shoot around wearing pearl snaps and jeans. Just Texas through and through. One on the shot clock. Oh, and a late foul call. A bailout as Utah wants the shot clock violation, but the whistle goes against Onyema. Oh, Third personal. Yeah, you Utah see, as they, as they like to call him, he's got to be aware of the clock here. It's really, I love the hustle. In fact, we talked about Coach Golding today, almost at the exact same spot, Lowell. He had him go dive on the ball. <laughs> and if Coach watches this tape, he, I know he's going to remember that because they were doing kind of a dive on the ball drill and that's almost exactly where that action happened today. 
The only difference is Hunter wasn't also going for the ball. That is the guy they're looking to take a major step forward this season for UTEP. And Yema, unfortunately, because the fourth UTEP player with three fouls is Timmy Allen with his second field goal of the night up to seven points. Nice patience there. How's a guy like that manage to be so consistent? Because a year ago, he was the same guy in the tournament as he was at the beginning of Big 12 play, as he was in the season open. I'm glad you asked me that question. The Sue goes to the bench. I, I think he's so consistent because he embraces who he is. And I like that means it. he doesn't have to do anything different than what he is as a ball player, and it shows up in the results. Is that tough for guys to stay within themselves? Absolutely, because everyone wants to be Trey Young or Michael Jordan or not that those two are comparable, but in terms of being star, yeah, he's got, you want to be elite. And a lot of people, one or three short. I like it. I like it. I'll take it. That to me is part of running. I'm talking about that a lot. I want to get into what running means as we game progresses because that's something Texas is trying to do all season long. Kick out to Gillis, the transfer from Evansville. No good. Carr with the rebound. So a slow start for Gibbons is not hit from the field so far tonight. Gibbons was second team all Missouri Valley Conference last season. Also on the most improved team in the NBC. And that's Tamari Sibley going to the bench along with Onyema. Going back to the conversation with Allen staying within himself, I think especially when it's a guy that's not an above-the-rim player, and he seems to embrace that and be okay with that. Yeah, that's an isolation play for him right there. From the free throw line. Falling to the backside, couldn't get the roll. Frazier the rebound. Yeah, you accept it, but he forced that. A lot of times when guys have plays call for him, they think they have to shoot. Sometimes you can... Create the offense for someone else if you don't have a shot. Looking for a shot inside. Rebound by Frazier. Great offensive rebound by Uchev. These bigs are high flyers. There's Calhoun. Calhoun back in the game. Three fouls in the first half. And draws a foul on Texas. I thought they out tough Texas there. They were pretty aggressive. Utep was. Timmy Allen picks up foul number two. And in this program, Lo, we hadn't really gotten into it, but it is a storied program here in the state of Texas. We all know about, or many know about, the history of Texas Western and winning a national championship, the first university of college, Division I in the state of Texas to win. At the five black starters. How about those two gentlemen that we just saw? John Teicher, 42nd season as the voice of UTEP. He was in El Paso for the last 18 years of Coach Haskins' career. Steve Yellen, the bear, played for Coach Haskins. Said he was not friendly when you played for him. But yeah. once you were done, you were best friends. Yellen on the right of your screen, by the way, has a son that goes here at the University of Texas and is a practice player for Vic Schaefer's Texas women's team. A lot of through lines there. And Coach Tim Floyd, actually Coach Bear, recruited me almost went there. Oh, nice feed inside. A refinish by Tyrese Hunter. How about the cut? I mean... Won the drive, but also the presence of mind. And that's an example of what I mean about the last play. When Allen tried to manufacture points that weren't there. He can create offense for a teammate. And up and in, and a little flex job by Otis Frazier. But here's the assist from Timmy Allen. Hard drive, the help comes, and then you got cutters going to the basket. You really got to love Hunter. A lot of times, guys don't. They have great me measurements and metrics when it comes to jumping and running, and it doesn't translate. It's not functional. Well, in Hunter's case, that 
43 or 45 inch vertical. It's extremely functional. One, you saw it there with the great finish, the catch and finish at the rim. But also we've seen it tonight with his rebounds. He can rebound in there with the trees, if you will, because of his explosiveness off the floor, Lowell. Also just a sign of overall strength. Yep. Explosiveness. Short area quickness as well. Looks off a defender and finishes. And Tyree Sutter has not taken him long to not just endear himself, but get very comfortable. And there he is, man. Getting these guys pumped up, showing some energy. Show him some juice. Yeah, and sometimes a lot of small guys will be like a bat out of hell trying to get to the rim. You want to be at a maneuverable pace, and that's what he did there with that great finish. Really good pace going downhill. Frazier had to force that shot over Brock Cunningham and company. Yeah, what a pickup in the transfer portal by Chris Beard. And you know, different than some of these guys. And then he's still young, so you got a lot of life left on the court with Hunter, and it was a winner at Iowa State as well. History. Well, I'm just infatuated with the history of this program and what it has meant for sports in general. The fact that yep. it was the first championship team with an all-black starting five, just think about the way the game has changed since then and how influential that Haskins was because of that team specifically. Yeah, and that, you know, it's not that there weren't other very good black ball players, but there was a coach who was willing to have the courage, really, essentially, to play the best players. Dessou gets the nice finish on the out of bounds play, or the, I'm sorry, not the out of bounds play, the timeout call for the play that was executed, but just the bear. Felt confident with the guys that he had and they brought him home a title against a very good Kentucky team and a lot of that history still lives in this program though. lives everywhere. Yep uh, Sibley knocks that one down Haskins The late great Haskins is Cunningham leads that short coach at Texas Western which didn't change its name in Utah 1961 to 1999, 14 WAC titles, 14 trips to the tournament. Even coached the great Nolan Richardson. Yeah, a lot of through lines there, and also a, a, a very or a great assistant to him after that, obviously, was a guy named Tim Floyd, who yeah, yeah, guys like Coach Golden and, of course, Coach Beard would know. Coach Tim Floyd, he actually recruited me. On my visit was a guy named Tim Hardaway, Mr. <laughs> Killer Crossover from Chicago, who went on to be a great player. And he's a Hall of Famer this year. Congratulations, Timmy. I set up to Hardy to watch. Rebound pulled down by Frazier. They love their basketball in El Paso. That is a huge shot there from Otis Frazier, the third the sophomore transfer from George Mason. Was buried on that depth chart at George Mason. Now getting his opportunity here to be the more focal point of this UTEP team. I mean, in the first three ball, there's the exchange baskets. The Sioux with his second bucket. Still so intrigued by what the Sioux can mean for this team. It's the final eight games of his last season at Vanderbilt with a knee injury. Also cost him the first eight of last season. They took it very slow with his recovery. Want to protect his future, make sure they were doing right by him and that future. But it never seemed like he was right a season ago. Well, there, there's the physical part a lot of times where guys can come back from particularly knee or joint injuries, but then, low there's a mental part. Yeah. And so we saw some of that with him being a little up and down. He made some big plays, but his hat struggled a little bit with consistency. But this should be the year for him to break out. Gibbons, big time three, and here comes Utah. Not done yet. We got a 10-point game with 13-34 left. Well, Shamar, the Evansville transfer, he's an all-conference level player, so... <laughs> Give him three buckets here in a flurry. Well, this is a huge luxury right now that Texas has when you can just keep feeding and going through 
a big. To me, low, he's the balance to Texas's perimeter on the offensive end of the floor. Frazier thought about it. Back to Gibbons. Full head of steam. Five off the glass. And Jamar Gibbons is given his all. Rice quickly the other way. Awkward angle and draws the foul on Tay Hardy. Yeah, one of the biggest mistakes that teams make that like to run, they think you can't necessarily run after a make. And that's what that was. And the layup. Utah, Texas came right back at them, and that's that's often a very opportunistic time to run after someone scores the ball. It's going to send Rice to the line. Rice from Fort Bend Marshall High School in Houston. Played for the 2017 state title there. Undersized and therefore under-recruited. His only D1 offer was to New Mexico State. But he is a competitor. Has an old school game. Hello, I think this this lineup that's on the floor for Texas, to me, this is the, their, their art, if you will, lineup. And I say that because four of the five guys on the floor are scorers and look to score. And also there is a, a better fluidity, if you will, tonight so far, anytime you get this lineup on the floor. Rod Cunningham now. Whoa. Let's earmark this. Now you got a high flyer. You got Desu who you can throw the ball to. And then you got three scores on the perimeter. Anecdotally and just I read tea leaves. <laughs> At reading the tea leaves, this is a dangerous look right now for Utah. They have to be careful going against this lineup on the offensive end. Uh, for Texas, just because they have so many scores. Uh, Hunter comes in. Not that he can't score and lead them, but it changes the dynamics greatly. But now you got a facilitator, the best. facilitator to the bench. That's fair. Set up all these other guys to do that score. Rice made both, then goes to the bench. Utep has made this interesting. Yeah, they've been very disciplined. Great ball movement. Wide open three-point attempt. Frazier missed everything. It was a good pass to Sibley. Sibley working up front. Blocked by Desu. Back to Sibley. Beats the shot clock. He got it! Jamari Sibley. How did he do it? Well, that offense was just a little better than, or a little more lucky than the defense. Great job staying with it. He got the air ball right to him. Got it back. As the shot clock was winding down, it somehow floated that bad boy up and through. The second year minor comes up with the biggest shot of the night for Utah. Look at Golding and the intensity this man coaches with. Well, that's an isolation for his big. And the leave up and under, no by Frazier. Hey, it's getting interesting though. It's not just a done deal that it's experience and, and the job that Sonny Dykes has done right off the bat. And that Dykes name, that's a Texas legendary name. Golding, his family has a long history in the game of football in the state of Texas as well. His dad was a legendary coach. So all coming together as Hunter barely keeps that one in bounds. But the Texas football coming off a huge road win. First road win in more than a year at the road at Kansas State. And that is a foul on Hardy off the drive from Tyrese Hunter. Isn't there another tie with the Texas football program having a horn frog here on that staff as well? A former you, you've got the guy that put that program together. <laughs> That's right. And Gary Patterson. That's right. Coach P, you know Coach he's going to be fired up for this Coach one. Coach P might have some insight on what those guys want to do or like to do. Well, you know what was remarkable? Talking to Joe Golding about how that upset two years ago in the tournament took place. I mean, that was one of the, the big shockers, biggest shocker for Texas in the tournament as... ACU went in 
with nothing to lose. Yep. It is interesting. He's best friends with Chris Beard and brought up the fact that Texas Tech beat Texas twice that year. So you know he had to lean on Chris Beard to get a little bit of scouting about the Texas Longhorns going into that matchup. He was fearful that Matt Coleman would try to take over the game because he was so great at the Big 12 championship. He thought that if Matt Coleman would have tried to take over the game from the onset, that Abilene Christian wouldn't have a shot. But in his words, he waited too long. He also did not want to see Brock Cunningham on the court. And Cunningham was not on the court as much as Golding feared he would be. All of those going into the DNA of that upset win for Abilene Christian, which ultimately led to Chris Beard being here at the University of Texas. Well, that's a nice patience there with the isolation. Texas got exactly what he, what they wanted. Hunter does it, such a great job of keeping his dribble. A lot of guys will pick the ball up. Getting to the rim at the right pace, but you mentioned that that was probably one of the worst matchups Texas could have gotten with a in-state school. Yeah, I think Illinois that year was upset as well by another in-state school in the tournament. That first game, it's it'll be so Hunter. disappointing for these big programs. Almost loses a rock, gets it back. Here's Allen. Allen slips. Picked off by Hardy. Hardy slips. Follow the bouncing ball. Here comes Sibley. Back to Gibbons. And we got a timeout. We can clean up the court here. But yeah, that was a shocking upset of 14 over a three seed. And Golding said that outside of having children, that was the best moment of my life. Also pointed out, that was that core group's second NCAA tournament. So they had one experience under the belt already. Did it go well? And that was a big factor having been there to get that upset win over Texas. Well, and the other piece to that that should be brought up is obviously Golden goes to UTEP and then Rodney Terry comes back home. Yeah. Where he's been before the University of Texas and assumes the associate head role done a great job of helping Coach Beard build this program to do the Utah. Simply beautiful mid-range J, and it is an eight-point game. So closest it's been since eight minutes left in the first half. Utah making this really interesting danger zone here for the Longhorns. And that is a foul on Shamar Givens. 9.35 left to go. Well, what UTEP has done is just stayed the course and not gotten caught up and running up and down and taking quick shots, as Coach Golding talked about today in the shooting shoot around. Just staying loyal to the game plan, being extremely deliberate is what's kept them this close. Well, car for three. No good. Bishop cannot get the rebound. And this UTEP team looked like they were falling apart in front of our very own eyes. It was a 17-point deficit, and now they have a chance to make it a six-point game, perhaps a five-point game. Texas students, the corral now coming to life, getting more engaged. Givens turning the corner, the kick out. Hardy passed it up. Here's Malik Zachary back inside to Kalu. The floater into the hands of Christian Bishop. Carr hurries the other way. Allen transition! Rip the rim!
this place has been tonight, Lance. Well, Texas needed a big play. They had a big stop there, but on the offensive end, Carr got a little overzealous. This is the kind of basketball that they're talking about playing this year. Get your wings out on the floor, have your smalls push the ball. But I thought that offensive possession kind of put a lid on the crowd. The roof would have came off of the booty had they scored in that last possession in Texas. 11,313, the official attendance, all on their feet, being loud. Put back, thrown down, the silencer by Kevin Kalu. That was a man rebound and finish. Nothing Texas can do about that other than do your work early and try to keep that big fella away from the basket. The UTEP team that returned only 11% of their scoring from a season ago. They are growing up quickly, learning about each other. Good defense by Hardy. And a turnover. Chris Beard warned his team, don't get caught up in everything Ten else seconds. around this Ten game. Seconds. Oh, great you call. Can't have that. Got a little slow walking the ball across the 10 second line. Sir, this summer on the left, voice of the Miners for 42 years, and Steve Yellen, who played for the legendary coach Haskins. And they are believing in their team right now. 52-44 with 7.09. When we look back, though, at that 10-second violation on Gibbons as the turning point, Texas has to make it mean something. It's going to be a foul. Well, this is a... Kevin Callow picks up foul number four. To play after a timeout in Texas. And go to the free throw line. That's a check in the plus column for Texas because they hadn't done a great job up to this point of being able to execute out of timeouts. Good Bishop. Free throw line. UTEP absolutely dominating on the offensive glass. 10-4 edge. As Rice is pulled down, that's going to be a foul against Onyema. That was too easy to call. Yeah, good job there by Rice. Check this out. That dominance on the offensive glass leading to a 15-2 edge in second chance points. But that's one of those fouls you just can't have. The 10-second violation, one of those turnovers you just can't have if you're going to beat this team. And this is a cool moment right here. Golding and Beard are talking to each other <laughs> during this free throw. And yeah, those and are self-inflicted wounds. But I, you just don't see something like this right here too often. <laughs> and it's not talking trash. I mean, it's just two guys that know each other very well, very familiar with each other's staffs. Impressive. And there's two by Russ. Makes it a 10 point game. Under seven minutes to go. Carr coming over to see us, but he stepped out of bounds. Shamar is good. He's, he's better than this. We saw the 10 second call. He's got to take a dribble over. Again, he had success. Evansville, he's mature. The senior. But didn't have opportunities like this. Facing the crowd like this. In the new arena. And Texas is trying to open up with the win. Simply wants a timeout. And that's that defense that Coach Beer was talking about with, with Hunter. Great job. Right after 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Time to see what Rory does as a follow-up. Harmon was sensational as a freshman. What does she have in store for year number two? And is this the year that Vic takes the horns to the final four? It was a 17-point lead for the Longhorns. UTEP has kept clawing back 
They've maintained their composure as good as possible. Givens to Sibley, corner three, the Sioux with the rebound. Hunter looking to run. Hunter into the paint, looks off Allen and finishes. And the lead is now back up to 12 points. Well, he's had a few of those where he brings the ball in the front court, and if no one stops the ball, he's done a great job getting near or to the front of the rim and finishing. Solomon, difficult angle, goes down hard. Rice to Carr. Carr to the The Sioux is eight point. Timmy Allen's got nine. Rice, the transfer with nine. And Tyrese Hunter, the best newcomer yet. Leading the way, leading all scores with 18 points in his first season. And transferring from Iowa State. And the best thing he's done tonight it really is he hadn't had to shoot threes. Area of growth for him, but he's played to his strength. There's Hardy. Five on the shot clock. Lobbed it inside over Hunter. Hunter got a hand on it. No. Out on Utah. Gonna say it's out on Calvin Solomon, and he's saying, I didn't touch it. Does he have a point? Well, it, it to Oh, yeah. Oh, barely. <laughs> yeah. Barely. <laughs> I guess didn't think the young fella could get up that high. Or the little fella, I should say, is Hunter. He's got that bird leg. <laughs> yeah, that, that bird played in his hands. Got a little home cooking there. <laughs> Jeff did on that last possession. And he has looked like a difference maker for this program here tonight. I know it's just one game, but there's something different. There's something different about this. The old man of the group. Jabari Rice hates it. Texas run. If you're behind the defense and you play for Texas, all you've got to do is cut and you will be found. Hardy tries to silence the crowd, but for the moment he does, as Hardy nails the three, the three ball, able to keep UTEP back in this game. Had it within eight. Go back though to that 10 second more violation. Second more general. A key floor general for Texas, particularly in the latter part of the second half. One and one here for Marcus Carr. After the foul on Gibbons. Texas now at 70% from the charity strike, 14 of 20. Got a nine point edge over UTEP. From the free throw line. And got both. 450 remaining. Texas tries to hold off the miners and open with the win. Hardy, the man that had the first bucket here inside Moody. Leaves it short, and that's out on the Miners. Texas basketball. Game management is key for Texas with this 15-point lead. Get Hunter back on the floor. Essentially, you've got two point guards and Hunter and Carr. Look how much experience. Is on the court right now. I like Carr. Season number six. Dylan Sue, two years. Oh, gets it to roll in. Well, he's been so good tonight off the bounce, creating driving lanes with his crossover. I mean, we were at a perfect angle there. Really does a good job of shifting the defense. Just think about the experience though. Marcus Timmy Allen, shooting season number five. Rice, season number four. Tyrese Hunter is a young pup, and that's a battle hardened sophomore going through the ringer in the Big 12 already. Well, that'll be the anchor for this team is all of that experience that they have. 
which means probably harder now for Morris and Mitchell to break through and get significant minutes. We know they're going to be in the rotation and there will be good playing time, but it looks like the veterans really have solidified their spot at least early in the season with Chris Beer. Well, yeah, but I also think you need Mitchell. You're going to need his length, no doubt, his athleticism, energy. Like I said earlier, he plays it off the ball. They'll need him. Good play. Three is short by Frazier. When you know you're in a good spot, when you can bring in the number four recruit in the nation, and you don't need him immediately as Rice hits the three. First three-pointer for the Longhorns since there was 4.13 left to go in the first half. It's ballooned to a 20-point lead. Givens trying to turn the corner. No whistle. Givens again. Ten on the shot clock. Nice little scoop pass. And the finish inside by Calvin Sullivan. These guys are so long. You tell Contact with Hardy. Serge Jabari Rice, is he impressing you, LB? He is. You're going to run, my man. Because oh. clearly they didn't see it. You do see that. That's what I want to know. You're in Final Four form <laughs> from the jump. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Already the best line delivered in the history of Moody Center. <laughs> I appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> oh, hey, we never fail. We are undefeated when it comes to having fun calling these games. I agree. I agree. And, and it's because of you. You do such a good job of creating it. Seriously, you created an environment and an atmosphere that allows us to have a good time. And I'm going to give a shout out now to the students. They've responded. They've gotten back into this. And it really is going to be a learning curve because Texas has not had this in a really, really long time. So these new fans come in, these students, they don't know what the expectations are. They don't know what their obligation is, not just to show up, but to have a plan, be prepared, be a difference maker. It will happen. Yeah, they'll, they'll, someone will pull the group together and lead them um, to the next level that you're talking about. Early candidate, can we get the guy uh, once again behind the UTEP broadcast crew? He's got the, the hat with the longhorn on. Oh, yeah, that, the, oh, that yeah with the Bevo hat That's on That's the top. early candidate. Yeah. That, right there. I like that with the tie and the silver chain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's hard work. He didn't go buy that hat like that. He bought the cowboy hat, a Bebo stuffed animal, and then used pink duct tape to put it all together. And it even stays together when he takes it off. That's yeah, impressive. Uh, what is impressive is, is your talent scouting for the students. Yep. I mean, he's still... Hey, they're cheering. looking for a leader. Yep. That, that could be your guy. Big election night coming up, you know, I mean... Absolutely. Galvanize people, pull them together. Yeah. That is the man. A man for the people. That this crowd needs. <laughs> That's great. Tyrese Hunter, meanwhile, has really stolen the show. I mean, it's been a well-balanced performance for Texas, but you cannot deny the impact that he has made immediately on this team. Oh, whistle, yep. Grabbed him around the waist. But that's different. I mean, this guy is, he's a point. He's running the show. And it's a great balance that they've struck between him and Carr. And Carr may be better because of him than anybody else on the court. Well, I think, I mean, he's a blessing for Carr because he takes a lot of pressure off, off of him and allows him really to focus on scoring the ball. From the wing spot. And to Sue. Now up to nine points. 
free throw away from double digits. Three Longhorns already there. Hunter with 18. Rice second with 14 and Carr with 10. And now to Sue with 10 as well. Do, do my eyes deceive me with Carr not having a three? I could have sworn I saw at least one or two Terry Porter threes in the game. Or were those twos? It's been a while since that happened, my friend. But oh, yeah, that's the area shot. where he'll have to be good this year. I think is yeah. knocking down that three ball since Yeah, really those nice crossovers, but those were twos Just to keep the floor open and spread Morris jump stop and that's a, a move that Chris Beard is a big proponent of so that is something that is taught as soon as you arrive here in Austin and that gets away from Utah. They have cleaned it up with the turnovers in the second half, but still too many to have a shot. And ultimately, to me, the turnover really was the story of the game. Because you go back when it was a 52-44 game, yep. UTEP had the momentum back. And Shamar Givens, he'll learn from it. Just too casually brought up the basketball. 10-second violation. And really from there, that's when Texas turned on the Jets. And they had three plays back to back that were, I thought, self inflicted wounds, as you said, and changed the whole tenor of the game. Carr, the cradle, and he's going to go to the line. Talk about this matchup. Shocking to me. 1923 24 was the last time that UTEP played in Austin. What? Yeah. Were they even hooping that long ago? Wow. But just, that's, that's this amazing. seems like one of these matchups, UTEP needs to be here more on the regular. Well, maybe with these two friends, they, they will start a little bit of, a little bit of that action where it gets them home and home at, maybe, maybe Coach Golden wants Chris to bring the horns that way. Yeah. And they showed a lot of fight, a lot of character. I mean, Joe Golding had to completely rebuild this roster, much of the way that Chris Beard had to do it a season ago. And they have shown some flashes here with a lot of unknown pieces. Another part of this foul trouble, they had multiple players with three fouls in the first half. Three. John Dos Anjos, the Juco transfer forward also went to the locker room early with an apparent injury. And so a team with a lot of inexperience, unproven parts, has had to try to figure this out on the fly with the foul trouble. And Alex and Mekway checks in, along with the legacy Gavin Perryman. And a Mekway, freshman from McKinney, Texas, is a guy that does a lot, will find a role eventually here inside this program. He's a winner as well. Austin Westlake crew, that they're going to remember his game-winning dunk to beat Westlake in the state semifinals to eliminate the Chaparrales. Well, Perryman makes a play there with his back. And here's Morris was looking for Mitchell. But too far behind him. So a minute left. What's your biggest takeaway from this opener when it comes to the arena and when it comes to this Texas team? Well, I love the intimacy of the arena. And now you've got a venue that feels very modern in terms of the type of basketball that people like to watch in yeah. a collegiate environment where you can be intimate and really amp up your home court advantage. And then also just selling it out. I mean, it's the last time that that happened on opening night where Texas men's basketball game. And then as far as the actual basketball beyond the score for Texas, you check off the point guard box. Yeah. You, you've solved that. Instantly. Instantly, yeah. In, in one fell swoop, you have a guy there in Hunter who will be, be able to be a floor general. 
And now you're you're just going to need to have other guys grow in their role. And I think the next one that needs to come with him will be Carr. And I know tonight he had some some nice moments, but he's going to have to be comfortable playing on that wing, playing off the ball. I think with Hunter, because I think Hunter, the team is better and he's better. Hunter, when he has the ball in his hands versus being a receiver, because he's not as good of a three-point shooter as Carr is. Well, we talked about the pregame show. Does Texas have a star? And he brought up, you don't necessarily need one. Yep. You always feel a little bit more comfortable when you've got one. I don't think Texas had one last season. Could Hunter end up being that star? Well, I think way comes up with a loose ball. I think he'll certainly be one of the, if not the most important player because of the <laughs> position. Perryman, come on, let it fly. Let it fly, Gavin. Somewhere Joe Schwartz is saying you gotta you gotta put that up. Joe Schwartz. With Kim Mulkey at LSU now. Oh! And we got a whistle before the throwdown by Onyema. If we know with time, Dylan Mitchell is going to be a force. There's a lot of athleticism in that young body. He could be a guy, but it is a luxury where he doesn't have to be the guy from the jump. And I don't think he is a the guy kind of player. I think he plays off of people extremely well. We talked about it earlier, the, just the long arms. So we need to catch and finish around the basket. And also, he had some, he had two blocks in that game Texas did against Arkansas. And I know it was an exhibition game. And they were his, particularly, he had a big time elite next level help side block thrown into the second or third row. It's the kind of thing that he'll provide for this team. So. And he was good enough tonight, but I wouldn't put too much stock in it. This is a good player, Dylan Mitchell. He'll be good for this team, and they'll need him as they approach conference play and talent level and team level rises. Well. Hey, buddy, we're going to remember this for a long time. Yes, you, know, you said it. We've called a game at all three. <laughs> the Greg, the drum, and now Moody Center. As Texas 